If you're looking for a way to be able to go out and sell your time for money by allowing people to book into your calendar and in the process pay you for your time, then I think I've found the best possible solution. I'm going to say best possible solution because it's using the best, highest rated calendar plugin that I could find. It integrates with WooCommerce and it also integrates with the best sales funnel builder for WordPress, which allows you to not only sell a consulting call or allow people to book in time with you, but after they do that, then you can show them upsells and downsells before the thank you page. So let me go in and show you how I have this set up on my website and then we'll go and reset it up in a demo website so you can see how it's all done and so that you can go and integrate this into your own website. So here's my website and if we click up here to book a call, we land on this page here which just outlines what I could help people with on a consulting call. Now once we go through all the different things that I can offer, down the bottom here, they can book their call. So if we click book your call, we're now taken to this page here. And if we go down, you can see that I have this calendar here. Now with this calendar plugin that I'm gonna show you in just a second, I have defined in the back end my products and my pricing, my times and days that I'm available for somebody to book that product. And so that's all reflected here. So I've blocked out that I am not available on Sundays and it's also in half an hour time blocks. So somebody can book in for half an hour or they could book in for a full hour. And when they do that, it will reload the calendar and then they have those options there available for them. So let's just say somebody books in on Monday, it'll show 9.30 to 10.30 and so on. So let's just say they book in for 11.30 till 12.30 and then go continue. They can put in their details there. So I'm just logged into WordPress, so it's just auto-filled for me. And they can put in their phone number, so I could just type something in there and then click continue. And then this is the last section where it says, okay, is this all right? And then somebody says continue. And behind the scenes, what's gonna happen is this product is gonna be added into our WooCommerce cart and then redirect us to a WooCommerce checkout page. Now I'm gonna show you how I have designed this checkout page in just a second. But having a look here, it is a custom design and you can design this using your favorite page builder. Now, if we go down, you can see that was added into the cart on this checkout page. And I also wanna point out that we didn't go to a cart like a normal WooCommerce uh, checkout flow. So we went from what would be a sales page with the calendar and then that added into our WooCommerce cart and then skipped the cart and went directly to this custom checkout page. So again, I'm gonna show you how this is all set up, but I just wanted to point that out here. So they put in their details here and then go down and then they would pay. So I'm just gonna use a test gateway here just so we can go through the process. And I'm gonna place my order to book in for the consulting call. Now notice what happens here. We go from there to an upsell and it says, wait, get my getting started with Bricks Builder course. And then I could go through the details. Now, this isn't what I actually have set up on my website. This isn't a real funnel. I just quickly made this to show you what was possible. Now, I don't know if you wanna upsell a consultant call with a course. It probably is a bit disjointed and you might not ever do that, but it was just a really easy way to show you that you can add an upsell after that consulting call is booked in. So don't focus too much on it being an upsell from a consulting call to a course. It could be anything. You could upsell a physical product, anything. I just want to uh, specifically show you that you can upsell people with the solution that I'm about to show you how to set up. Now, if we go down and let's just say, okay, yeah, I wanna get this course. We could click on this upgrade order now, and then the cart slides out. So then here we could click on yes, accept. Now you don't have to have this side cart come out where they have to accept the upsell. It's just a setting that I enabled for this particular upsell, just to make sure that nobody's accidentally clicking the upsell button here, because we are about to charge their credit card for a second time. Now this might hurt conversion rates because they might go, oh, actually I don't really want that. So it can be disabled. I will show you how to do that. But let's just go back here and say, okay, yes, we'll accept the upsell for the course that charges the credit card a second time. That's been added to our order. And now we go to the thank you page for WooCommerce. And if we go down, we can see our appointments in there and we can see the getting started uh, add-on was added in there. Now let's go to the back end of our website and see how that order was created in the back end. So let's go here under WooCommerce and orders. And then let's click into that order that I just made. So coming down, you can see that all my details are in there now from the checkout form. And we can go down and the parent order is this one here. And it has all of our consulting call details. So if you're needing to do support or anything like that, you can come into here and go, okay, yeah, that was booked for this date and so on. Cause maybe somebody books in and they're like, oh, I booked for this date. 
we have hard evidence here that it was for this particular time because it's written as order meta to this order. Now, we also have the upsell here. So coming down there where we upsell the course. And we know that this is an upsell because the plugin that we use to upsell is called Funnel Kit. And they tag every upsell with this upstroke purchase, yes. And if we go down here, we can also see each of the transactions with the gateway listed separately. That way you can refund them independently. So for this one here, you can see that we did the upsell here for the course. And so if we wanted to refund just that upsell for the course, but not refund the initial consulting call, we could click refund here and it will refund just the upsell. Because again, there was two different charges there in, for example, Stripe. If they went through Stripe, there'd be two different uh, charge IDs inside Stripe. Here, we're just refunding the second charge ID. If we wanted to refund the first one, we'd refund up here under the parent. So now let's go ahead and look at how that consulting call was written into our booking software or our plugin. So back in the dashboard, let's go down and the plugin that we're using here is WP Amelia. So I'm going to click into the dashboard. And you can see we have two bookings here. It shows us how much revenue we made. And it can see that me, I have two bookings as an employee. And if we go down, we can see what those bookings are. So the duration as well, how much they paid. And if we hover where they paid through, so through WooCommerce. Now, if we come down, we get some other stats here. But before we go any further, I did want to point out that I did a lot of research about booking plugins and appointment setting plugins. And I weighed up using a SaaS like Calendly and then integrating it that way. And after doing a lot of research, like I just said, WP Amelia was the highest rated one. And it was the one that basically is the bread and butter of recommendations these days. If you do any research online and you're looking for an appointment setting plugin, this one is the one that everyone recommends. So I was like, let's just go with it. It's quite affordable and it does seem like it has a really good track record. It's been around for a long time. It's a very mature product. And having gone through and installed it myself and done what I'm about to show you in this video today, uh, I'm very happy with it. So definitely check it out. I will leave my affiliate link in the description below if you want to go and check it out. It doesn't cost any extra for you, but it does help support the channel and help me make these videos. So coming down to the calendar view, if we go out to the month view, you can see that I've been doing a few tests on this website, but I think, what was the one that we just booked in? I think it was this one here for uh, 11.30 till 12.30. So it's this one here. So if we click on it, you can see all the details under here. We, we could add notes. If we go to payment, we can click straight back to that WooCommerce order to go, so, uh, go through and sort of uh, get some information if we did need to. The integration between Amelia and WooCommerce was what really sold me and why I really wanted to pursue trying to integrate these because the integration between WP Amelia and WooCommerce meant that I could integrate it with my sales funnel plug and funnel kit and add upsells and downsells if I did want to and also create the customized checkout pages and have control to build the entire flow that a user would go through using my favorite page builder in WordPress. Because if I was to go out and use a SaaS, I have to learn how to build a page in the SaaS. So it just, it just felt like I really wanted to make sure that I could do it inside of WordPress. And this was a really clean solution as you'll see in a second. But I just wanna show you a couple more things inside this booking plugin before we go and set up the sales funnel. If we have a look at this calendar, this actually syncs, it's a two-way sync to my Google calendar. So if I open up my Google calendar, which is just calendar.google.com, so I have it syncing to my work calendar over here. It's extremely easy to set this up. So I'm not even going to go through it because you'll be able to work it out uh, very simply. But it's just here. So it happens straight away. So we can see when, some, when I booked before, it got added here. And I also have it hooked up so that it automatically creates a Google Meet link. And me and the person on the other end who just booked the call get this email with the same Google Meet link. And we also have automated reminders. So... Uh, if we go back to here and we go down to notifications, you can set up all these custom notifications when they go out. So you just go create new notification and I could specify one that I did was uh, two hours before. So two hours before I created that and then the scheduled notification and it was before a consulting call and it was before and it was two and then I just did uh, hours down here. And I did that. And then you could do one one day before and so on. So here's my same day two hours before one that I set up. Hey, just a friendly reminder that we're here. 
and then you just get this merge tag that dynamically outputs the Google Meet link for that specific consulting call. And I've been doing a lot of tests and just letting this run over the last couple of weeks. Just I booked in some, you know, once a week for four weeks. And then I just went to my email every now and then. And I could see those notifications coming and reminding me uh, during those those test bookings that the call was starting and so on. So this is all firing off. It's working really, really well. And I'm very happy with this plugin after letting it run for a couple of weeks. And you can also see you can do SMS reminders and you can also set up reminders to go to the employee. So the person that is on the other end. So this would be going to me. Now, the next thing that I want to show you quickly in relation to Amelia and why I really like it is if we go to services and we click on this, so this is the service that I set up. It's very easy. You just go and put the name of it, who's going to be doing this as the employee. And if we go up the duration and pricing, so 30 minutes, this price, and then you can do a custom duration, an hour, this price, add another one, this and that. And this is where on the front end, they have a drop down to select the uh, time. So we'll do one more test transaction after we go and set up our funnel in just a second. And you'll be able to see where this is output in case you missed it at the start of this video today. Now you can also take deposit payments. Uh, not really something that I would do in my case, but maybe you'd want to do that as well if you're like a physical location and you're seeing this video. You can also output gallery images there for the services that will show on the front end during booking. And here under settings and integrations, you could also do Zoom, lesson space, payments. Now, the last thing that I wanna show you because this is a really important one is how the calendar syncs. And I promise you, then we're gonna get into setting up this, uh, th this sales funnel. So if we go to calendar, I'm gonna open this up in its own window. Actually, let's just uh, split screen. And let's go down to the month and it was this one here. So let's say we need to reschedule this. So I think I could just drag it to the next day and then we'll say it'll change the time to tomorrow, same time. Cause that's gonna happen a lot of the time. Someone's like, oh, sorry, I can't make it today. Could we do the same time tomorrow? Just drag that event into wherever you want. It says here, confirm. And then it should just sync over here pretty much instantly. Let's have a look. So that's writing and then over here, now it's moved. So it really is a, a clean solution and it feels like a SaaS. Like just because Amelia has been around for so long, it really does feel like a mature product. And I feel like I'm not missing out on anything by not going with something like Calendly. Having it all inside of WordPress using WooCommerce, it opens up so much possibilities, which is what I'm about to show you how to set up right now. Firstly, we need to understand how this is writing to WooCommerce and interacting. So if we go to WooCommerce and products and I open this up, I'll just close that down. You can see that we have the appointment here. Now, the way that the Amelia plugin interacts with WooCommerce is it just creates this product on installation of the Amelia plugin. And it doesn't have, it's just a simple product. Like if we go into it, you can see it's a simple product. It has no pricing because this pricing is all gonna be dictated by what Amelia is doing when you create your service and tie the service to this product during checkout. So I just want to point that out that you're not having all these different WooCommerce products for each of your services in WP Amelia. So you, for example, my consulting call for half an hour and an hour, that's not a variable product with those attributes. It just, ha it just links to this appointment product and then behind the scenes using order meta and its own custom integration with WooCommerce, it handles the different pricing. So with that done, let's get into creating this funnel. So if we go to funnel kit, and funnels. My funnel is this one here, book a call. And this is again using the funnel kit plugin. I've been covering this plugin a lot on my channel. It is an incredible plugin. I really do feel like every single WordPress website these days could benefit using it in one way or another. Whether you're a store, this allows you to add one click upsells and downsells after the checkout form, it allows you to customize the checkout page, it adds in cart upsells and downsells. And it also has a built in CRM for a cart abandonment. It allows you to store and send emails to an email list inside there. It pretty much just does so much. You definitely need to check it out. And it also allows you to build sales funnels, which is what we're leveraging today. So let's get into the sales funnel, which is book a call. And you can see inside here, we have what? One, two, three, four, five steps. The first step is gonna be the book a call sales page. Let's go ahead and open this. And we're just gonna work our way down the funnel steps. So this is that sales page, so book a call. And just to recap, people get there on my website by clicking up here. So instead of going to, for example, my about page, that's just a normal page inside my website. 
which I created by going to pages, add new, and created it like a normal page. That's my about page. My book or call page, as you can see, it's a step inside of a funnel. So it's actually a separate post type and the post type is sales page. So when we click in here from book a call, we're entering the first step of that funnel and this is its own post type, a sales page post type. So starting at the top of the funnel with this first step, it's explaining what this call can offer people. And this is what you would do. So you'd explain your service and the benefits to booking in with your business. So just going down, again, I just explained what we can cover on the call, the WordPress plugins that I can help with and so on. Now down here, if we click book a call, this takes us to the next step in the funnel, which is that calendar. And so coming back from our funnel, we've gone from this step here where we explain what the call is about down to the next step here. Now this is also a sales page, but inside here, I have embedded the WP Amelia calendar form. So I'll show you how that's done. If we edit that step and then we just edit the template, you can see that we have a short code here that the Amelia plugin gives us. So all I'm doing is on this funnel step, just outputting that short code and that handles outputting the calendar. So they're the first two steps here and they're quite straightforward. Now this is where the uniqueness comes in and this is the thing that actually took me a little bit of time to work out how to do. And this is really why I'm making today's video to save you time because it's not as straightforward as you might think as you'll see in just a second. So here this next step is a checkout page. And if we open up this checkout page, you'll see the URL is forward slash checkouts forward slash checkout hyphen call. So this is a checkout page that I've specifically set up for the consulting calls. And you can tell the sidebar here is all about the consulting call. So the things that we can talk about on the call, who the call's with, and some of the logos of the plugins that we can go through on the call. So it's really important that when people complete that calendar, they go to this specific checkout page that is designed to be all about funneling people into the consulting call. But here's why this is tricky. Here under WP Amelia, if you go to settings and then to payments and we come across, you can activate WooCommerce here because by default, WP Amelia, I'm just gonna call it Amelia from now on, the Amelia booking plugin, you can just have their built-in Stripe and PayPal integrations that are down here and it doesn't use WooCommerce at all but I wanted to use WooCommerce. So you could actually do that. It doesn't cost any extra for an add-on. You just come down here and you activate it and you just enable it so that when people are paying for their Amelia bookings, you're, you wanna take them through the WooCommerce checkout process. And you can see here, you can set the default page when they're booking in to redirect them to the cart after they complete the calendar and they click to pay. You can take them to the cart and it will just add it to their cart or you could take it to the checkout page. So with this activated, I'll show you how this would work right now. So let's go to the first step of the funnel and let's go down and book a call. And then I'm gonna book in for here and pick there, go continue, put in my details and then let's go. So it's from here, when you click this continue button, Amelia creates this product in the WooCommerce cart. So let's click continue and you can see I've gone now to the default WooCommerce checkout page. And this is the out of the box WooCommerce checkout page. So we need a way to somehow hijack this. And when people add from the calendar, redirect them to our custom checkout page that we created inside of our funnel. And the way that we do that to get them to go from here with the calendar down to here, because they're not doing that currently, they're going from here to here, and then they're being redirected out of the funnel to the default WooCommerce checkout page. The way that we get them to this next step is using a plugin by Funnel Kit called Cart Hopper. Now, I'm not quite sure why you need to do this, but if you write to their support team, they can activate this in your Funnel Kit account, and then you can download it and install it in your WordPress uh, website. Now, if I open this up, this is what it looks like. And if I go to the rule that I have set up, so it's currently disabled, if I edit this, this is where you can redirect people to a specific URL based on the items in the cart. And that's why the plugin is called Cart Hopper because you're, you're hopping during the cart process. So here, if the cart items match my appointment product, then I want to skip the cart and I want to redirect them to this checkout page here. So I don't want to go to the default WooCommerce checkout page. I want to go to the checkout page inside my funnel. So let's go ahead and I'm gonna reactivate that. And let's go through the process again. So I'll go book a call and then we'll scroll down, book your call. 
So here, let's book in for Friday at 4.30. <laughs> Jesus. And then we'll go keep going through here and we'll say continue. Okay, now that's going to add it to our WooCommerce cart. And then it's going to, cart hopper is going to see that appointment product is being added to the WooCommerce cart, that it hijacks the redirect and redirects us to our custom checkout page, which is this one here, which back in our funnel is this step here. And from here, we don't really need to do any overriding. This just works out of the box because from here, when we pay inside a funnel kit, on a checkout step, on a checkout page, it automatically just knows to go to the next step in the funnel, which is going to be this upsell, upsell step. And then we go to the thank you step. The only thing that was really tricky to set this up, and again, why I'm making this video, is I couldn't quite work out how to get from the calendar in WP Amelia to this custom checkout page. And it wasn't until I recalled that Cart Hopper existed, because again, you need to reach out to their support to have them activate it in your funnel kit account. When I realized, oh, I could just do that, it just made this all work out of, the, out of the box flawlessly. So now we go from A to B, cart hopper takes us from here down to here, and then we just we just cascade through the funnel. So, so we're currently here in our demo order that we're just doing. Now we're gonna go to this next step, which is our upsells, and then the thank you page. So let's click into the upsells, and I'll just show you how I have that set up in case you're curious and you've never looked at funnel kit before. So if I just, remove this product. Let's just add our course product again, just to show you how I did that. So worth noting, if we go back an the upsell step here inside of our funnel can actually hold multiple offers, multiple upsells and downsells in this one funnel step. And then we go to the thank you page. So if I go into here, we could add our first offer and I could call this bricks builder getting started course. And we could go add. And then let's go and add a product into this offer. So I'll add here and I'll go getting started. And now it's gonna search all of my WooCommerce products and it's gonna retrieve that one there. And I'll go add and now that's in there. And again, if we go to products and all products, that was this product here. So all we did is add this WooCommerce product into this offer inside of the funnel kit upsell step. So now we have the ability to set our pricing. So we might say, okay, let's try and do 15% off the regular price. And you can see the normal price is $100. The offer price would be 85 because it's $85 off the regular price. If this is currently on sale, which I actually have it set up as, maybe we wanna do 10% uh, off the sale price. So is 100 is currently on sale for 50. 10% of 50 is $5. So now it's gonna be $45 during this upsell process. And here, ask for confirmation. This is where you click the upsell button and the side cart slides out and they have to click to confirm. That's how I did it there. So for this one, let's go ahead and enable the confirmation there. And then let's save changes. And it's reminding us we need to activate this. So we just do that up here. We need to activate that offer. So now that's done. So that's what I ha had set up when we first looked at this at the start of today's video. But we can see this is an upsell. So like I said, the upsell step or the, if we go back, this one upsell step inside of our funnel can house multiple offers and an offer can be an upsell or a downsell. So if we click back into here, by default, the first offer that you add in there is going to be an upsell because you can't downsell unless you've upsold previously. So this is an upsell. Let's go ahead and add a, a downsell. So we'll go add new offer and this is gonna be course for cheaper and we could set this as a downsell and click add. Again, I only have two products in my WooCommerce website right now. So let's just offer the same product, the getting started with Bricks Builder course. But instead of on the sale price, 10% uh, off, let's do 50% off. Again, these are very bad examples in terms of what you would actually do. But this is, I want to focus more, more on how you actually set this up and the possibilities. So it was normally $100. It's on sale for 50. We're giving 50% off the sale price. So we're gonna sell this for $25 as a downsell. So let's go ahead and I'm not going to activate this. So they're not gonna get a warning to accept. It's just gonna charge your credit card again. So that way we can see both of those possibilities. So let's go ahead and I'm gonna save this. It's, it's reminding us to turn that on. So we'll turn that on and save. So now we have our upsell here. Actually, I forgot to save that after. 
So now we have our upsell here where we're gonna do 10% off the sale. And if they say no to that, we'll offer them the same thing, but 50% off the sale price. So with that done, let's go back. And now we have our sales page. Then we go to booking a time, checkout. Then we have an upsell and then a downsell in here and then the thank you page. Let's go from the start and go through that entire funnel that we set up. So let's go book a call. Okay, you're gonna read about it. Yep, that all looks good. Okay, scroll down and let's book in an hour and let's do it on the 31st for 10 a.m. And we'll go continue, put in our details, continue, confirm this and then continue. That adds that product into the WooCommerce cart Cart Hopper sees that that appointment product was added into the cart, hijacks the cart, redirects it to our checkout step in our funnel. So we've gone from here to there and now we're here. So we go down, we're looking at all of this. Okay, there's our appointment details. So we can go through. Do you know what we should also do here, which I haven't done in my videos recently, is add an order bump. So let's go ahead and add an order bump because you can pretty much always think of a good order bump to add to a product. So order bumps are a really good way to go out and make extra revenue from the traffic that are already purchasing your products. So let's go add order bump and I'm gonna give this a name. So I, again, I only have one product in here. So I'm gonna say getting started with bricks builder course and let's go add. And then I'm gonna edit this order bump and let's add a product and I'll add that getting started. There it is there and we'll go add. And there it is there. Maybe we're gonna leave it at its sale price there. So it'd be sale price order bump and then the first upsell would be 10% off and then the second upsell is 50% off. Again, terrible examples here. You would never do this, but you get the idea of how you could go and implement upsells into your appointment booking funnel. So let's save that and then we'll go to the design. And then here we could say, learn bricks super fast without losing your hair. And then let's go to save. And now it should be done. So if we go back to our checkout form and reload, if we scroll down a little bit after putting in our details, okay, that's all good for the consulting call. We put in our payment details and then it's a last minute upsell. Do you wanna add this online course to your order? And then it's on sale. So we could click yes. And then if we go up, that will add it into this order. So now we're buying the appointment here and then we're adding the course here from the order bump. So let's go ahead and you could actually make it very easily. So say we're buying this, this will add it to the parent order. And so if we're gonna sell the getting started online course here with the parent order, we don't wanna show the upsells and the downsells for the course because then people will be like, what, I just bought that. So why are you showing the upsells for it? So let's actually go ahead and set it up so we don't show the upsells if we buy it from this order bump. So coming back to our funnel, so we'll go back. We'll click into our upsells and then we'll go down. So here we are for the first upsell. And down here you can say skip offer if the product exists in the parent order. They can also do it if they've ever bought this product, which would probably make sense as well. So we'll put that in there because you don't really want to buy a course twice. Now what I'm thinking here, and I should probably test this, I'm just thinking out loud here, is that if they if we're checking if they've ever bought it ever, 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 oh my god, ever then I guess we don't need to check the parent order because when it comes to here, they would have already bought it. So let's try that. So let's see if it skips, if they've ever purchased it, but they will have purchased it from the parent order. So let's save that. And then if we go up and go to the down cell and go down, let's also skip it if they've ever purchased this. And let's go save. So now if we come back to our checkout form, because we're going to buy the course here, we should actually skip both of those down cells. So if we come down here and click place order, we should skip those up cells and go to the thank you page, which we haven't done. So coming back here, I think it's because we didn't, this must check previous orders, but it doesn't check the parent order. So let's actually save that. So we're checking the current parent and previous orders. And let's do that as well for here. So I'll do that there and save. Let's go ahead and delete that order and try and do it again. So we'll go here and I'm just gonna delete all of these just so that we're not seen as having purchased that before. And I'll just empty the trash. So I'm just gonna go ahead and just do that again. So I'll just book in here for there. Okay, continue, continue, continue. So we have our call in there. So I'll go down and I'll say yes to the order bump and that's gonna add it up here. So now we have both of those in there, one and two. So let's go place order. 
and we should skip both the upsell and the downsell because it's in the parent order. So we land on the thank you page and that's exactly what we wanted to do. We skipped the upsells because it existed the course in that parent order, which was added from the order bump. So I'm going to go ahead behind the scenes, just delete the orders again so that we're starting from scratch and then we'll go through the funnel again and look at the upsells and downsells process. So I've just gone ahead and done that. Let's start again. So book a call going down, book your call and then I'll click here and for that time and go continue. That all looks good. Continue. Yep. Continue. Okay. And we'll go down. So we're not going to accept this now. Okay. So let's just say it's $50. Let's go place order. And then it says, wait, and this is the upsell. So again, I haven't done any customizing here. So I've just done it out of the box template. There's, you know, I would go through and add the product title here. This is your chance to get the getting started with Bricks Builder course. It's now on sale because you've booked a consulting call with me and having a look at these numbers there. So it's $110 uh, or was originally now $49.50. If we go back to our funnel and click into the upsell step, you can see that this first upsell we have it priced uh, normally $100 and the sale price is $50. So we have three prices, regular, sale, and the offer price. And the offer price is 10% off the sale. So coming back here, the regular price is $100, but because I'm in Australia and my store's in Australia, it's charging Australian tax. So it's just added 10% onto $100, which is $10. So $110 and then the offer price was $45 as we saw here. And it's just adding Australian tax on top of that. So 10% of $45 is $4.50, which brings it to $49.50. So that's why those numbers are a little bit different there, but the same deal, right? 50% off for the offer. Now, if we come down here, remember for this upsell, we are asking for a confirmation. So before they say yes, or when they click the button to accept this, we want them to confirm that they definitely want to get their credit card charged again. So if we come over here, and we say, yes, upgrade my order now. You can see it slides out and it's just confirming. So if we say yes, we will skip the downsell and go to the thank you page. But I wanna show you the downsell. So let's go, mm, actually, no, I don't wanna do this. Let's go no. And then we go to the downsell and then it says, wait, Grant. And again, it's pulling Grant here because in our WooCommerce checkout page, we entered our details. So it just knows that that's our name. So here's an exclusive um, offer to complement your order. If we go down, that's the product name. So it's pulling it from the WooCommerce product. Getting started with Bricks Builder was 110, now 2750. So if we come up to the downsell and we go down, so the offer price, so it's 50% off the sale price. So 50% off $50 is 25. And it's adding the 10% tax on there because I'm Australian. That's why we get $27.50. Now down here, remember we didn't ask for a confirmation. So where the previous example, we had the cart slide out, we had to click again to charge our credit card. If we click this, it would just charge the credit card. So I might go, yes, add that to my order. That's done, charges the credit card for a second time. Now we're on the thank you page. Then if we go up to WooCommerce and orders and we go into that order, we can go down and we can see the parent order details for Amelia is there and then upstroke purchase, yes. So we know this was an upsell. So they said yes during the upsell process. And if we wanna refund the consulting call, we would refund it here. If we wanna refund the upsell, we'd refund it down here. And then behind the scenes, it's booked in with the Amelia plugin. So here, that was for May 23rd uh, at 2 p.m. So if we go down here, Amelia, and we go to calendar, and we're gonna see all employees here. I could just toggle it to myself. If you have multiple employees, it's obviously just me here and I'll go month and I'll just split screen again. So if we go down the 23rd at 2 p.m. So that's this one here. And you can see it syncs like straight away with my actual Google calendar. Now, if I wanna reorganize, maybe they wanna move that two days. I could just drag it there and I could go confirm and we should see this move from, where was it? Here, there. So that's how you can go and very easily integrate a booking appointment setting plugin with your normal out of the box WooCommerce website, but then take it one step further and be able to design a custom sales page, a custom checkout page with upsells in the checkout form, have one click upsells and downsells after the checkout process, and then have them land on a thank you page. And something that I didn't actually point out is you get analytics for all of this. So if we bring this back up, and we go to funnel kit and funnels, 
and then we click into Book of Funnel and we go to Analytics. If we go down, we can see all the different things that happen in our funnel. So 23 people went to the Book of Call page and then 14 people arrived here. So the conversion rate is 56%. Then from this pick a date sales page to reaching the checkout page is 57%. And then the people purchasing here, the conversion rate from our checkout form is 5.26% and we've made $163 from one purchase. And then one person saw our first upsell, they didn't purchase that. And then the order bump is listed out here. So one person saw that, but they didn't say yes to it. So this is the number of conversions. So if one person bought from the checkout form, how many of those people said yes to the order bump? So that's what that number is there. And that's the conversion rate over here, the percent of that. Then down here, we have our upsells. So the first upsell was for the course for the 25% uh, off, I think it was. So the first upsell here for the course, one person viewed it, which is gonna be the original person that's going through the checkout process. They saw this, they didn't purchase, and that's why they saw the downsell. On the downsell, they said yes to it. That's that there, 100% conversion rate, $27.50 that we made, and then they reached the thank you page. And this is one of the reasons I put in a lot of effort to set up sales funnels where I possibly can to really be able to analyze how they're performing and how people are interacting with my products and services and just my website overall. Like are people liking what I'm offering? Is what I'm offering making sense to people? And this is how we're gonna make those decisions by having analytics here and sales funnels are the best way to do that. Now, what you also have the ability to do inside a funnel kit is A-B test these things. But if we go back to steps, Let's just say the, if we go down, if we go to our checkout page and we have our order bump, we could set up an A-B test. Let's go A-B test. And we could A-B test our order bump offer. So let's just keep it very simple and A-B test the pricing. So let's go ahead here and we're gonna duplicate this and create a second variant. And the first variant, let's give it 50% and the second will get 50, so equal weights. And we'll go confirm. And then let's click in to this first variant because I can't remember what we set it up as. So in here, I have a regular price of $100 and a sale price of $50. So that's just set up in WooCommerce. So if we go to all products and I click in to that product, you can see it there. I've set the sale price. To keep this a bit easier to follow along, I'm gonna go ahead and just remove that sale price and we'll just save this again. Now we can just think of this product as being $100 right now in my website. Easy maths. So if I come back and reload, so now it's $100. So let's go ahead and I'm gonna rename this. And this is gonna be the Getting Started with Bricks Builder course. And this is gonna be for, let's do 25% off. And then here I'm gonna give 25% off the regular price. Sorry, 25% off and save. Now I'm gonna go up and then variant B here, let's click into it. And let's make this 35% off the regular price. And I'm gonna go ahead and save that. And then we'll also add that into the name just to make things a bit easier. So 35% off, click add. So now if we go up, we have variant A, which is gonna be 25% off and variant B, which is 35% off. And we're gonna be sending 50% of traffic to each one. So when one person goes, they'll see this one. The next person that comes to our website will see this one and it will just go backwards and forwards until we declare a winner. So let's go ahead and click start and it will just say start now. And now that's all running. So over time, we could come back into here and see, okay, we've got a decent amount of traffic going through here now. And overall, which one's giving us the most revenue? Oh, this one's giving us quite a bit of revenue, conversion rates, and you can work out which one is gonna make you the most profit. And then you can just come here and go declare as winner. And what Funnel Kit will do is it will just push that to be the live A-B test. Let's just say our variant here, 35% off. It's actually a higher discount, but it's converting at a higher conversion rate. We're actually making more profit with this one. So let's go ahead, declare that as a winner. And it says it'll be live on your website, which is what we want. So let's go declare winner. And now it says this one was declared the winner. And if we go back to our funnel, and then go into the book of call funnel. So you can see the 35% off variant that just won the A-B test has been pushed live and is now the active order bump. And if we go to into here, you can see that it has the 35% off there. 
And just to finish all of this off is you can see AB test icons in every single part of your sales funnel. That's another reason that I like to try and use funnels as much as I can when I'm trying to guide people down steps is I get analytics, but I can also improve using AB tests, my conversion rate and overall my net profit. Or, you know, I have this done for um, opt-in funnels so I can improve my opt-in rates for people to subscribe to my mailing list. That can all be done using Funnel Kit. So here you could A-B test your sales page design. So anything from the wording, a completely different design. You could come down and test your checkout form design. So you could, uh, using Funnel Kit, you can design multi-step checkouts. You could, you could test one step versus four step. For your upsells, you can A-B test um, upselling different products during the upsell process. So where I'm upselling a course, I could A-B test selling a course versus selling a membership or something like that. Just rough ideas, but you can A-B test anything here. I think it's probably worth before we go is showing you how to set up the uh, multi-step checkout here and then we'll wrap all of this up and then I'll get to editing it and hopefully I can publish this. It is Saturday the 20th of May, so let's see if we can get it out. So here, let's go A-B test the checkout step. And this variant here, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna edit this. And I'm gonna rename this and I'm going to call this one step. Because there's only one step on the checkout page, i.e. all the form fields are output on the one page. You don't have to tab to step two, step three, step four. So let's go back. And now let's set up a multi-step checkout. So I'm gonna go ahead here and I'm gonna duplicate this. And I'm gonna send 50% of traffic to each one and go confirm. And then I'm gonna click into the variant. And then I'm going to go edit and let's just make this a two step checkout. And I'll just rename this to two step and go update. So now let's go across to fields. And you can see we have step one here where we output the customer information, billing details, shipping details, order summary, and payment gateways. So I'm gonna go ahead and preview this before we make it a multi-step, just to show you what I mean. And remember, this is our checkout page. So there's one step, everything is output on this page here. So let's go ahead and add a second step. And then coming back here, step one could be customer information and their billing details. And maybe we want to, we don't actually need a shipping because this is a virtual product. So let's actually get rid of that. That just came pre-built when I uh, installed this checkout step. The order summary and billing details. Let's, let's just move them into their own step. So I'm gonna get rid of that. So billing details and order summary. So here, let's go and we'll add a new section. So we're gonna add section, billing details, and we'll go add. And in here, we'll add the billing address. And again, this is a virtual product, so we don't need the shipping details. And then we'll add another section. Actually, let's make this a three-step. I'll go here and we'll call this add section and we'll say order summary. Go add and we'll drag the order summary into there. So step one, first name, last name, email, phone. Step two, their billing details. Step three, order summary. So let's go ahead and save that. And let's rename this up here because this is actually a three step we made it in the end. So three and update. So now if we go and preview this after those changes, step one, first name, last name, email, phone, proceed to next step. Billing details, proceed to final step, review it all. They choose how they wanna pay, enter that, place order. Now what you can also do here is under optimizations, if we go down to multi-step field preview, we can show what fields carry across the multi-step process. And this is a really good way to help make sure people are validating information from previous steps. They haven't entered anything incorrectly. So a really important one that I like to add is email because this is where they're gonna get the receipt sent. And you definitely wanna make sure they've entered that right. First name, last name, we don't really care about that much. Uh, billing address, you might want to put that in there. The postcode might be validated for the credit card, so it could be a good one to make sure they've entered correctly, but I'm just gonna run for email for now. So if I save that and we go back and I just reload the page, I'll, so, I'll show you what that's done. So here, first name, step one, proceed, and see how it's carried that across. And then if we go proceed to the next step, it carries it across as well. Now, if we go billing address and go save, and we reload, so here, step one, proceed to next step, the email is now carried across, billing details. Now if we go proceed to final step, now we have the email and the billing details. So they can verify that. I'd probably actually recommend doing these two here. 
Then the order summary, make sure that it's all adding up right. Correct details here, the right email address, payment details, place order. Then they go through the funnel. So remember, we're setting up an A-B test here for this checkout page. So if we go back to our funnel step, where we're setting up the variant. So variant A is a one step, 50%. Variant B is a three step, 50%. Let's see which one converts more and makes us the most profit. The logic behind this test is that people sometimes feel if we reload the page here with a multi-step, if we have a one step, then somebody gets overwhelmed because of how many form fields are on the page. And so they abandon checkout. The idea of a multi-step is to guide some, some person on your website through a series of steps that doesn't overwhelm them. Because seeing just four fields here, it doesn't seem as overwhelming. Yeah, I can put time aside right now to fill out four form fields. Okay, next. Oh, there's more. Okay, there's only five. I'll keep doing that. So next step. Oh, okay, credit card details. So that versus seeing them all at once, maybe that scares people away when they see them all at once. So maybe the multi-step does convert at a higher percentage. And with Final Kit, you have the ability to easily set up that A-B test. You don't need any external software. So just to recap before we close this off, Final Kit was the software that we're using for the A-B testing. Funnel Kit is the software that we're using to go and set up our custom checkout page design. It's also the plugin we're using for the cart hopper capability. So when people add the appointment product to cart from the calendar in Amelia, we're hijacking the cart and redirecting them to our custom checkout page. And Funnel Kit is also doing the one-click upsells and downsells. Both Funnel Kit and Amelia have affiliate programs. Even if I wasn't an affiliate with them, they are the two best options for what they do. I haven't found anything that comes close to meeting their functionality in their respective fields, I guess, booking calendars and sales funnel building plugins. They are the best in their field. So even if I wasn't an affiliate, I'd definitely be recommending them. Being an affiliate is just a bonus now. Now, before I sign off here, I did want to mention something that I wasted a bit of time doing and you, I really don't want you to make this mistake either. Because I'm so heavily reliant these days on the Funnel Kit plugins, and because the Funnel Kit Automations plugin can do so much, I try and move everything into a Funnel Kit Automation as often as I can. And so when I installed WP Amelia and I went down to notifications, I was a little bit like, well, I can send email notifications and SMS notifications to the customer or the employee, but it just seemed too simple. But when I went ahead and tried to do it with Funnel Kit Automations, uh, because you can actually send web hooks from Amelia to send it into Funnel Kit Automations, I wasted I wasted too much time doing that. And at the end of the day, I was like, does this actually nearly really need to be done? And so I came back in here into notifications and I looked at what was possible here. And what you can do using this simple screen here is more than enough. This is more than you need to actually go out and do for a booking. If you think about a booking, it's a very basic thing that's happening. You have a point in time that two or more people are going to meet up on and the notifications that you're sending to your customer are around that point in time. And you can do all of that from here inside the Amelia notifications, or at least as much as I need to do for my case. So here you have these two different types of notifications. So a scheduled notification. So, so you could separate them out by the products. So I have consulting calls here. Maybe your business has three types of consulting calls. You could specify your notifications per product or service you're offering. You do have that flexibility here. But once you do that, it's basically before, how many minutes or days, or weeks or months before the call takes place. And then you have all these merge tags that you can add in. So if we go to show uh, email placeholders, you can add all of these into here. And one of those is the Google Meet URL, which is one that I'm using in there. And then you also can do it afterwards. So you could thank the person, hey, uh, great call today. Uh, if you wanna learn more, uh, these are my courses here and anyone that's booked in a call with me gets 15% off. So uh, here's the coupon code. Just, you know, you have that flexibility. Basically anything that I could really think about that I'd want to do, I could just do from the screen here. So uh, I did waste a bit of time trying to recreate this in Final Cut Automations because it is a bit of, ha of a habit to try and move everything there. And yeah, I, I would just recommend seeing if this is enough for you because it was enough for me. And yeah, you could waste a lot of time trying to do that other route. So that's a notification here. It's a scheduled, so it's based on time from the event. Action triggered. So if we approve a consulting call, so for example, you can have somebody book in with you, but it goes into like pending status. So you can just double check that you're available on those times. And if you are, then you mark that uh, 
that appointment as approved. And then you can send an email to say, hey, uh, I, I am available on that time, so let's lock it in, let's do that time. So you have that ability uh, there to trigger based on the appointment status. Just think of these as like a WooCommerce order status. If you reschedule a call, uh, then an email goes out. So if we go to appointment rescheduled, again, these ones here, they're already set up when you install WP Amelia. So I didn't really need to change anything. I just added this one here. So two days before or two hours before, sorry. That's a custom one that I created. And then I did one a few minutes before, uh, but the rest, they already came. So if we go down to appointment rescheduled, which is one of those event ones, it says, hi, your details for the consulting call with Grant Ambrose has been changed. The new time is here. And then just let us know if that doesn't fit in. Yeah, I would recommend before you jump in and try and use webhooks to send it to FunnelKit automations to try and do all that stuff. Really just think, it, do you need to do it? Because you can waste quite a bit of time trying to do that as I found out. And next, I'll see you in one of these two videos here. These two videos here are the ones that YouTube, based on their algorithm, think you're going to get the most value out of. So I'll see you in one of these videos.